I've been around and doing it, but now it's my time to shine and start proving it. I'm losing it, I'm moving it. The city is where I'm made, Bostonian flow. I kick it a back day, yeah, I got game. Got in a fan way, we the city of the champs. Every sport we play, spin wetter than the harbor, yeah. I'm flowing like the Charles. I be speeding on this beat, call it turnpike miles. Yeah, it's Google signing on, John to the Hancock, and I'm always key. I'm ready to unlock. I be doing big things, don't even have a deal, yeah. I battle through these. Welcome back, everyone, to the newest edition of Once a Week. I'm Billy Jan Lutis, and guys, I am excited about this video. I just had a great talk with this man before we even hit the camera for record, and I got that energy and that flow going, and I cannot wait for you to meet him. Guys, I give you Melvin Thomas III. He is a man of many passions. He's a rapper. He's a songwriter. And above all else, he is a spiritual warrior, and he leads the Spiritual Warrior blog, and much of what he learns and tries to help people understand falls right in line with many of the once a week messages we put out there to where this is more to us and more to this life than just the regular day to day, the hustle that we all seem to be on. So when I came across Mel's website and his social media, as much as hearing about him from a great friend, I knew I had to get him on the show. And that being said, guys, I give you Mel Thomas. Mel, I thank you so much for being here, brother. Thank you. And thank you for having me. This is, it's, it's a blessing, man. I can't wait to talk about it and spread the word to the people, man. Right? Exactly. No, like I said, dude, the conversation we just had, it's got that spirit flowing right now. So oh, yeah. we, gotta, we gotta dive into it. So before we step into that stuff, give us a little bit about your background. Like what what brought you to the spiritual journey? What brought you brought you to rapping and songwriting for that matter? Tell us a little bit about yourself. So, all right. So um I'm actually over a year and a half sober. So a lot of my struggles, um through addiction and stuff like that kind of led me to spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, there were times where I felt like I was in a deep, you know, depressive hole. Um, I was trying to reach out and I felt like I was calling out and nobody was hearing me. You know, that falls into the God, the religion aspect, and you know, just the, just the basic human need to be loved and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, through those trials, it really led me down the spiritual path that allowed me to create Spiritual Warrior. Um, and honestly, finding my spirituality saved my life because I would still be going down that path that I was going down. Um, I thank God every day yeah. that I'm a changed man. Yeah, that's phenomenal right there. I've As much as we all have had some form of pain that put us onto a spiritual path, a spiritual journey, looking backwards we at least with my perspective i'm i'm so happy i i was led down that path to lead me to a door opening to spirituality do you think this yes is yeah. yes i do mm -hmm. um you know when you go through things there's only one thing that you can do yep. learn from it yeah and um every all pain in my mind leads to growth and development mm, yep you know on a on a soul level definitely you know nothing superficial about you know depression nothing superficial about you know just being in a state of mind where you know hold on, i'm messing up <laughs> i don't know dude you're, you're oh, sorry. Spot on because the i agree with that wholeheartedly to where you know life isn't about getting from you know, oh my goodness, I just graduated high school, I graduated college, I get an incredible job, and that's it. Life is all about the unfoldment into the next level of yourself. And to so many people, the next level of unfoldment is spirituality to where we were all supposed to get to. And I yes. think that's why so many of us grew up going to church, which is incredible, or grew up under some religion or spirituality, which is great that people brought you to it. But I believe so many people stay and like, okay, I go and that's that. And they stay at this level, but then life comes into play or God comes in the way uh, into the way or the universe comes into the way and knocks you off of that and tries to crack the door open. So you can see just like you take the scales off your eyes, like it says in all these books and you see something so much deeper to where, oh my goodness, this isn't all there is. There's so much more to this life, right? Do you yes. Yes, I do. I read a book by Deepak Chopra. Yep. 
It was, it's called MetaHuman. Okay. And the thing, and what he was saying in MetaHuman is that humans have a story in this 3D re reality, right? So your story isn't just to wake up, go to work, put your face on, come home and pay bills. That's not the end, that's not the end all be all. Right. You know, so he was trying to say that in life, there's so much more than just the superficial stuff that we we as humans created for ourselves. You know, we created a very nice society. Yep. We created a, a place where we go, we make money, we do this, we do that, we trade, we barter, we buy, we're in a capitalist society and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, there's so much more than the 3D reality that we created. Yeah. And in MetaHuman, he's like, once you stop trying to live that story, then you really open up because you're not trying to align yourself with something that you feel should be you. Mm, yeah. When you stop trying to align, align yourself with the story that you feel somebody else created for you, right? then you really trying to, you find your true self and yeah. you stop trying to put on the show. I love that. That's huge right there. And yes. how many times, you know, viewers watching this can ask yourself this question. How many times do we try to live up to someone else's expectations of ourselves without actually expecting more of ourselves if you expect more of yourself from that point on, you start to find out who the real you is, the real self. And that at the end of the day is how we were supposed to live because we all have a different journey. We all have a different destiny. We all have different goals. We all have a different purpose to help make the world continue to spin for that matter. And when yes. people can take a step back and be like, I'm not going to listen to that guy. I'm not going to listen to that guy, but I'm on this route for myself. Oh my goodness, dude. Like I keep saying, the door opens. The whole, exactly. the whole wave of behind your eye. The, the veil gets taken away from your eyes for that matter. It opens up. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So in my mind, through my research, I kind of figured out that the purpose, at least for me, yep. my purpose is to be here and evolve to higher consciousness mm. and actually become or not even become, but return to that spiritual being that I was supposed to be. Nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. every day it feels like you're just doing, when you're spiritual, you, you take steps every day mm. to return back to that state of mind, that consciousness, that elevating your consciousness. You know what I mean? Yep. I agree. So that's, agree that. yeah. that's why, you know, and, and I, I try and read just as much and, you know, before we put this on, Mel and I were going back and forth a bunch of different books. And a lot of these books, whether they're uh, a faithful book or a meditation book, whatever it is, they say a lot of the same things. And I've, and Mel and I talked about this and we'll dive into it right now, where a lot of these books, like I said, say the same things to where we're all trying to get to something higher. Some people are on, the, on their way trying to get to heaven other people are trying to connect to their higher self as Mel just described. And they're so similar to the, to the actual fact that they're one and the same, where so many people try to live their lives trying to just make it to heaven. Why are we trying to get somewhere where heaven was actually meant to be in us at all times to spread it elsewhere? You know, I believe there is a heaven, there is an afterlife, no doubt in my mind about that. But why are we waiting to get there when we can live it out right now? And if yeah. you connect more to your higher self, that's what meditation, that's what prayer, that's what all these incredible spiritual acts are meant to do. Because when you can, if you go into a prayerful moment and you come out of that and you feel just rejuvenated or you go into a meditation and you're like, and you feel that peace factor right there, you feel a peace because you're connecting to something higher than yourself. And when you can take something higher than yourself and bring it into your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day life raises itself to a higher level, which at the end of the day, society wants to do on its own. It's just society is trying to do it on a man-made way when we are all truthfully meant to live on a spiritual made way. You agree yes, with that? Yeah. I do agree with that. Yeah. And um, I liked how you said the, the elevate thing. So vibration is mm. is a big thing in spirituality so yeah you know when you talk about vibrating at higher levels or elevating the higher consciousness it's like once you come out and you have that big spiritual moment mm. that's because there's different planes of existence you know what i mean this in the spiritual world i don't know how deep they want to get into it but mm. in the spiritual world 
there's different planes of existence and they all vibrate at different levels. Yeah. So once you you have that spiritual awakening, that moment, it's because your your soul, your inner, your inner self, you reach a different plane of existence, pretty much, but you're still here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But your subjective world, your spiritual world, your soul is just it, the vibration is higher. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they say a low vibration is connected to emotions and your mentality as well. So yep. like you get angry, that's a low vibration. That's or if you're depressed, that's you're in, you're in a low vibrational state. Yep. So when you come out and you feel enlightened, you and you're you're living happily, you're you know, you're maintaining your connection to the source and and you're you're living your life in a way where you can elevate, yep. you're gonna be more happier because you're elevating your vibration and your consciousness. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you look at the emotions of of humans and you look at you know the, the spiritual and scientific teachings of our time or whatever you want to say, yep, they, they relate so much. Like our biology and the vibration and the spiritual world, it's just it's just amazing how much they have in common. Hundred percent. I, I love that, and I completely, wholeheartedly agree with that. And you know, with regards to the frequency and the vibrant, the vibrations, the vibrancy that we all put out there, I agree with you. Everyone or lower emotions, you know, sit on a lower level, and it's usually a victim mentality. And if you think yes. about it, anxiety, depression, sadly anger, and, and all these things that every single one of us has experienced and will experience in life, mm -hmm. comes from the question of why me, woe is me. And yes, what is that question? That's the victim mentality. But there's different levels to this. And when you and I sit there and I heard this from Michael Beckwith, an incredible teacher that I, I, I've taken his master class, incredible, incredible for all of this stuff. And he, he said the other day where, you know, if you think about it, truthfully, when we all go through these tough moments and yes, we could get hit with depression, we could get hit from anxiety and we sit there and people may pick on us, people may bully us, people may think like, oh, what are they trying to do with their life or how, wh why do they think they can get there? In actuality, that would turn so many people off where they would be upset or angry at themselves. When in actuality, you should be thanking these people, just as it says in the Bible, you should thank people for the ones that persecute you. And you yes. should be thankful for this because they're telling you if you take your eyes away, they, they tell you that you got to another level and they're only picking on you because you raised your frequency and your vibrancy. And these people on the lower level aren't yes, yes. near you anymore. So they're trying to pull you down, but you already raised yourself. You don't got to look down anymore. You like, all right, you should thank them. Like, Hey, I'm not down there anymore, but I appreciate you letting me know that I raised my level. And if yes, people yes. can take that into their daily life where it's like, Man, so if they say if they say what they say, so be it. I'm going, so I'm going to a higher place, which is your higher self, which in turn connects you to heaven, like we connected it all before. The like I, I'll say it again: the door opens for you, and I want people to get that from this video right now. The yes. door is open, and all we gotta do is walk through. Right? Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So another thing I, I like what you said, but another thing I want to touch on. Yeah. I read a book, and I forgot the book name. Excuse me, but. The author is Greg Braden. Yep. Um, so I read one of his books and he said that it's a holographic universe, mm -hmm. right? So in you is reflected by the world that's around you. Mm. So when you have like, you have people that are bringing you down and stuff like that, blah, 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 this and that, yep. or you, or there's somebody that you don't like in your relationships, in your daily life, there's somebody you don't like or there's somebody you like, or blah, blah, this and that. Yeah. So you're only, you don't like them because everybody around you or the places that you are is a reflection of something that's in you. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, it's something that you don't like about yourself yeah. or something like that, you know what I mean? So yeah. basically your life is a reflection of your inner world. Mm. Yeah. So when you have people bullying you or stuff like that, or saying this about you, or saying this about you, it's because somewhere in you, you don't feel that you're adequate enough at this level, or you don't feel like this, or something like that. So really, when you look at negative situations, 
or look at situations that anger you look at situations that that um sadden you yeah other than you know like you know situational sadness or depression stuff like that yep. really take a deep look and be like okay these are outside circumstances but why are they affecting me like that mm. you know when you because really when we talk about your higher self your higher self is like an emotional guidance system mm. you know what i mean everybody has that thing in them where they get your heart starts racing or like you get a pit in your stomach or something like that that's your emotional guidance system that's telling you that what you what your brain is trying to do is not in alignment with your higher self mm, yeah. you know, i had a spiritual teacher tell me that as well so like you know you you're doing this and you're failing at it mm. it's because what you want to do the story you created in this 3d 3d um plane of existence isn't what your higher self really is aligned with Mm. You know, so if you're feeling like, you know, you're sad that somebody said this, you're sad that somebody said this, or somebody's picking on you, really look at yourself and be like, why, why am I reacting like that? Yeah. It's because your higher self is trying to tell you something. They're trying to tell you something. If, if somebody can provoke that out of you, it's because you need to work on yourself. Mm. And that's where self-improvement, self-empowerment comes from. When you evolve from within, yep. the outside factors will not affect you anymore. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. You connect. And I'm so glad you said you evolved to something new because that connects to one of your first statements you said when we started recording, where it's an, it's an evolution aspect. And every single thing that we go through in life is a lesson to help. How can I put this? Take the layer off yourself so you can get a little bit higher. Right. So yeah. as much as we can speak in vibrancy, frequency and levels for that matter, and different planes for that matter, you're evolving to where, oh, my, if you went through something terrible, it's as if your soul had to go through that lesson so you can learn something more to get to the next level. And yes. that connects so much. I'm going to connect it and drive it home for people right now. The Bible tells us that he's got it all planned. He's got every step of the way. All things work together for the good, the good of those who love the Lord, meaning God's got the plan of everything. So if God's the plan of everything, he knows that you went through that struggle. He knows that those tough times came. He knows those people said those things about you. And if you ask why, you may get an answer. But if you can trust and believe that he has a purpose behind all of it to where he's making you better and taking all that stuff, just as it also says from the scriptures, he takes all that stuff and works together for your good. All things work together. Romans 8, 28, right there. It's one of my favorite ones. And that connects to everything Mel just said to us, where you're evolving. You're learning something from this. You're getting to the next level. Don't question why it happened. You're seeing a reflection from yourself that you need to learn something and get to the next level. Yes. It works together in so, so many incredible ways. So I want people to take that from this message. But Mel, I want to ask you one thing right here. You, before we put this on, I want, if you have your notebook with you, I want you to show it to people because we've talked about so many books that we just went over guys i want you to see mel's notebook right now because before we put the video on and we're kind of going over some of these messages we wanted to give you mel showed me this notebook where he truly wrote out so many notes from every single book that he read he filled these notebooks up word for word oh. line for line because he wanted to truly absorb it so many people could pick up any book whether it's a spiritual book whether it's a sports book whatever it is so many people take it read it that was cool and put it down but i want you guys to do what mel did where he truly wrote out notes because he knew that it was going to transform him to something so much greater so mel talk a little bit about that without every book you do you put extra effort in. yes so um i did a lot of shopping on Amazon, right? Once I started, <laughs> once I started getting into the spirituality, I was like, you know what? I need to read up, you know, because once you once you get into this, you just you're diving, you're yeah. you're diving head first. There's no coming back. Yeah, you know what I mean. So once you go down that wormhole, there ain't no coming back. <laughs> yeah, but, um, exactly. <laughs> so I found an author named Greg Braden, like I said, and I stand behind this guy wholeheartedly. Okay. Um, there's actually an, an application on my phone that I had for like a year um, that I was watching. It's called Gaia or oh let me see. What it, yeah, it is called Gaia, G-A-I-A. 
Okay. And it has a lot of um, metaphysical teachings on it. And that's how I found Greg Braden. And I got a lot of his books. But so what I did was every day, and I just want to, I just want to show this. Hold on. Yeah. So every day, it started on, let's say, this, this notebook started on 8 2020. Okay. So what I did was to wake up and put myself in a vibrational state of, because different, different states of uh, emotion attract different things. You know, we're going to talk about law of attraction at some point. Yeah. But so I would wake up and the first thing I would do was I'd write every day in this notebook what I'm grateful for that day and that started my day and that already rose my vibration to a point where nothing's going to stop me because i know what i'm grateful for right yep. so then the next step after that was for me to read these these books and i would read for about an hour hour and a half mm-hmm. um everything that i felt connected to like if you see i, w- I wrote words down definitions um yeah i wrote phrases down and everything like that anything that really jumped out to me yeah i wrote it down and then and a lot of a lot of the reason why i can regurgitate this is because i wrote it down and i internalized it so that was my process i woke up i wrote down what i'm thankful for i read for about an hour an hour and a half depending on how the day was going work or whatever like that there was another point in time in that day where i would go back and and um look at what I wrote down from the reading that day and meditate on it. Yeah. Okay. You know, cause there's, that, that's another topic I want to touch is meditation. Cause people will think that meditation, a lot of people put off meditation because they say they can't think of nothing, mm. you know, but if you're, if you're trying to think of nothing, you're still thinking of it, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, it's actually funny. Um, do you mind if I go into a story really quick? Go for it, by so, all means. I'm I'm really open about this. Um, I'm a recovering addict, alcoholic, very proud. Yeah. So I was in rehab, right? And I had this meditation class that I signed up for, okay? <laughs> we did a meditation in there, which changed my life. Mm-hmm. So the meditation was, when you feel a thought, quiet your mind, be still, be quiet, meditate the normal way that you, you would think. But instead of beating yourself up when you have a thought, you're going to picture a river with a leaf. Mm. You're going to take that thought before you can even formulate it, yep. put it on the leaf and watch it go down the stream. Mm-hmm. Yep. And breathing, focus on your breathing. You know what I'm saying? So I know that's a little off topic. Oh, but I like it. Back to the, <laughs> yeah, so I'm good. just trying to, you know, tell you about the process that kind of got me like this. So, yeah. I like that because it, it yeah. shows so much discipline and a lot of people turn themselves away from discipline, but the only way you truly get anywhere in life is having a discipline factor. And, you know, it, it so with Mel showing us his discipline right there, guys, he's, he, his routine, he'd wake up every day. He'd start his day by saying what he's grateful for. I do the same thing every single day. I don't, whenever my alarm goes off, it's 5.00 AM. It's 5.00 AM. First thing I do is I thank God for the day. I got to do it. I got to thank God for the excitement that's coming today, the excitement and the opportunities that are coming today, the joy, the, the moments for that matter. I'm grateful for what's to come. And I believe that sets the tone for the day, just as Mel did. He, he wrote down what he's grateful for. Next, he went to reading for an hour, hour and a half, whatever it may be, depending on the day. That's discipline to where he starts his day right to where he's going and actively trying to learn and actively trying to better himself. Then he, he could meditate after that, but he goes into his day. And I'm sure the more times you did that, Mel, the great day started to add up. Am I right or am I wrong? Oh, yes. 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 Right. They exactly. Add up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You set your tone. You set your frequency. You set your vibrancy. You set your mind and your spirit right for that matter to where the rest of the day Things may pop up that could try and shake you, but when you have the right mindset and things, you don't get shook as much. And I think exactly. people, at least in you know, at least in American society for that matter, need to try and take that to heart because what because of the COVID times, people live in so much fear, which is a whole frequency and vibrancy in itself. But yes, because of that, people are now so tense and they're so anxious and so worried and stressed about every little situation that they miss out on the opportunities that could be right in front of them. But 
if you guys take Mel's routine and do it for yourself in your own way, you don't have to read for an hour and a half, hour, whatever it is. I always tell everyone to start with 10 minutes. Do something for 10 minutes. Meditate for 10 minutes. Concentrate on your breathing for 10 minutes. Read for 10 minutes. Do something to better yourself. Heck, watch this video again and again for 10 minutes. It <laughs> takes nothing from it, right? Exactly. <laughs> but Can I, so I want to say something quick, though. Yeah. So you were saying that, you know, the days they went on and got better and better. Mm -hmm. And I can show you in the book, you know, I'm not going to read it out loud, but basically, yeah. so this is what I'm going to say. So as I was doing that, yep. I noticed that when I woke up, it was putting me in a constant state of meditation. Mm. Now, that's another topic I want to touch on because you can, to be, to be enlightened or awakened, you kind of want to be in a constant state of meditation, a constant state of um, you're observing. Mm. you're observing so basically you you're still in your body but your consciousness is observing you internalize outside input you take it in you yeah. learn from it and you and, and you spew back in the in the world you know what i mean but when you wake up and you write or you say what you're grateful for or something like that that's putting you in a state of meditation mm. you yeah. know what i mean and when you do that it gets easier to slip back into that state of meditation that that calm that that cool that collected you know what i mean definitely yeah, yeah i like that that's awesome Let, let's segue that right over because as much as we mentioned meditation we we've mentioned prayer aspect we mentioned spiritual aspect you want to mention law of attraction which connects a lot of this stuff yes. a, lot of people, a lot of people take the law of attraction and i for one was one of these people i've come to learn about it i've come to understand it i've come to open my mind a little bit more up to it but whenever i'd hear law of attraction i'd I'd search elsewhere. I, I get turned away from it. But then when it connected all, because I, I read through the sciences and the Bible and I, I started to open my mind up to it, I started to see it clearer. So Mel, talk a little bit about the law of attraction for a minute. So the law of attraction, basically you have to, when you're in, so it's law of attraction is all about vibration, right? When you're vibrating at certain frequencies, you, let's start, first let's start about, Start talking about the power of thought right so your thoughts form basically your whole reality you know what i mean so you're thinking thoughts form emotions and emotions form deeds pretty much if you if you want to you know break it down or cbt any yeah. stuff like that i'll probably dive into that deeper later on but um when when you have a thought of positivity and from that thought sparks a positive emotion with mm -hmm. enough vibration and enough force the universe responds to that god responds to that yeah you know they say god god can read your mind obviously because you know god god is an all-seeing all-knowing energy mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so when you wholeheartedly with your whole being want something that's that's not for the detriment of you but for the evolving and the betterment of your whole you know your whole situation yep the universe is going to respond to that through law of attraction law of attraction is always always working though yep. so when you have negative thoughts that evoke negative emotions see now this is where i actually read a book called the law of attraction right and it scared me i'm not gonna lie i couldn't yep. sleep for two weeks yep. because basically it was telling me law of attraction is always working and when you're when you're constantly thinking of negative thoughts mm -hmm. and that evokes an emotion the thoughts that evoke emotions are the ones that attract because emotions are really the language of the universe. Yeah. And um, on my blog, I have a whole, I go into a lot more detail than I'm gonna go here, go into now. Wow. But when you evoke emotion from a positive thought, emotions, happy emotions are amongst the highest vibrating emotions, which the universe responds to. Mm. And that's called law of attraction, you yeah. know? So if you're waking up every day and this is this is how I started. I literally would just focus on the fact that I want to become a more spiritual, a more connected. I want I want to be more connected to creation. Mm. That was the one thought in my head every day, pretty much. You yeah. know what I mean? So through me just even thinking that and having so much joy behind that feeling yeah. and thinking to myself, I'm gonna get there. I'm there, I'm there already. When you think that you're there or you already have something, the universe is like, 
well, we got we got to give it to him because he's the frequency that he is emitting is yep. the same frequency that's going to bring it to him. Exactly. That's basically what God's saying. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And a lot of people, and I and I want to touch on this because yep. it scared me for a little bit too. But a lot of people are going to try to say that law of attraction is demonic, mm -hmm. right? But the thing is, you law of attraction is something from God. You know what I mean? Because it's even in the Bible. It says, you know, asking you and you shall receive, you know, seeking you'll find. Yeah. Because once you align yourself to receive it, yep. you already did. Yeah. Yep. It's not going to be on your time. It's going to be on God's time. Yep. That's the whole aspect of prayer. If you want to really get down to it, prayer could be an example of law of attraction. Yep. If you're praying for the health of your family, you're praying for the health of your friends mm -hmm. and inside you, you already feel like it's it's come to pass because you know God's gonna do it. You yep. know we have a giving, gracious, loving God. Yes, exactly. and He's gonna do it. That's the law of attraction because when you know there's there's no room for doubt. If there's any doubt, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. There's no room for doubt when you know that God's going to accomplish this. Yeah, boom, it's already done for you. You just gotta wait, sit back, and receive it. You have to allow yourself to receive the gifts that God is gonna give to you. That's what people get confused though, because yep. because they don't see it coming on their time. Yeah, they allow room for doubt. If you if there's one inkling one inkling of doubt, it's not it's not gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. This is where faith plays such a big role in spirituality and in any conversation with God. Period. Yeah. You know, you have you really have to believe it. And in the in the in the state of believing a hundred percent. The universe is like, well, okay, he's he's emitting this vibration and, and he, he thinks he already has it. So by by default, he's already attracting it. Yeah. We're attracting it. And everything in our life, everything in our life, we have attracted. Yeah. Any negativity that has sprung up in your life, any any type of positive thing, you attract it. There's nothing in this life that you can't. That, that you didn't do to yourself. And that's another thing that kind of had me in, in, in my head. I'm like, wow. Um, so I did this to myself. Yeah. And it's it's a hard pill to swallow, swallow. But once you once you get a grasp of law of attraction and you're like, and you know that it's always working, yeah. that's when you start reframing your thoughts. Mm -hmm. There's exercises in this book that I have, Law of Attraction, that was like, once you, if you have a negative thought, try to catch it before it evokes a negative emotion. Yeah. Because if you're just thinking something, it's not going to attract it. But when your whole being is attached to that thought and you have emotions behind it, that's when it's going to start attracting. Mm -hmm. So when you have a negative thought, you quickly want to reframe it yep. to dampen it down, dampen it down, dampen it down. I, I can't even think of an example right now, but. Oh, I get that. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah, yeah so I'm gonna I, I go off on a tangent when I talk about this no, because love it. Yeah, go ahead. Everything that you just said is so spot on, and one I want people to take that to heart because as Mel just described, when he first heard that, it struck him. It was tough for him to sleep. It was tough for him to really wrap his head around it until he did, and that's when things really started to come into play. So. That being said, in my eyes, I look at that one moment as his first, we'll say, inkling as, okay, there's more to this world, right? That was my first awakening, to be honest. Exactly. Awakening. Perfect word choice right there. Awakening. Bro, I have in the reason, hold on, real quick before you yeah. continue. Yeah. I have in my book, this is why I love writing. So write, love writing what I'm learning and stuff like that, because in my book, I can, I can turn to a page and the dates at the top that'll show you where that clicked yeah. where I was like all of a sudden I had free flow of consciousness I just started writing things I was like wow this is this is this this is this this connects to this this connects yeah. to this and in my mind that was my spiritual awakening and it's funny because in these notebooks I can look back and read and be like wow this is how I got to that point yeah, yeah. you know but so go ahead continue I'm sorry for interrupting I love that I love that and, you know, you have those awakening moments. And for people hearing about the law of attraction for the first time, heck, people could be hearing about prayer and meditation for the first time watching this video. 
don't let it scare you. Let it open your mind up and your spirit up to what's to come and yes. drive home everything Mel just said and how the law of attraction does connect elsewhere. And it's, it's written throughout these historical books that all of us continue to read today. Um, the Bible does tell you to speak things into existence as if they already happened. God is telling us he's written in his word that speak as if it's already happened believe it as if it's already happened because that's where your faith comes into play and i I had to throw this out there mel something told me to put on the no doubt absolute faith shirt from these episodes right and you said it word for word you can't have an ounce of doubt in you and i pointed to the shirt because no doubt you have to have absolute faith and you just drove that point so home to people because it's written in the scriptures it's written it's written in the law of attraction books you could pick up at a barnes and noble it's written in whatever it's written in the blogs. It's written on in YouTube videos. It's shown throughout this stuff. Yes. What, whatever spirituality, now I'm going to throw this out there and then we gotta, we'll move on to the next topic. But, you know, I always sit there and I look at these different spiritualities of the world. I look at, I, as much as I, I, I'm a, a Christian for that matter, and I, I believe on all this stuff, it opened my mind up to so much more that's out there. And I questioned, why are there like i get it there's different religions and everything i get it but we're all trying to connect to a source that is love at the end of the day so yes. if every single one of us is trying to connect to a source that is love at the end of the day why are there like and people go to war over the facts that they're trying to express love on a higher level because people go to war over whose religion is right and yet your religion and your God at the end of the day is telling you to love people. You're instantly going against the fact that you're telling someone to love someone because you're trying to fight them. So yes. if everyone is trying to, to show love to a God that is telling you to show love to others as in love thy neighbor, does that mean that since something is connected elsewhere, what if somewhere along the line throughout history, you know, I think it's in the story of the Tower of Babel where everything got shattered and the different languages went on in the world and as if people humanity got separated for that matter what if i'm supposed to learn from the next culture i'm supposed to learn from the next religion to see oh that piece right there that they have i'm supposed to learn to hire myself they're supposed to learn what i've learned through my background and teach it to them so they could get to the next level and at the end of the day that creates unity that creates harmony that creates love for all trying to connect to God, trying to connect to a source, trying to connect to goodness for that matter. What if that at the end of the day was what we're all meant to be here for? And somewhere along the line, pride, power, whatever, whatever word you want to describe, got in the way and then closed everyone off. Right. So I completely agree with everything you said, Mel. And I had to throw that point out there and to go to one of our final points, because I don't don't want to make this over like an hour and a half for everyone. (laughs) Uh, I want to talk about your music. Because your music yeah. connects to everything that we just said. And I want people to listen to your songs. I, I've seen the posts on Instagram and everything. And as much as I, I always tell everyone, all of Mel's stuff is going to be at the end in the credits of this video. But Mel, tell us about your music and how it connects to all the spirituality we just said. Because you truly, you sing from the heart, you sing from the soul, and you sing from experience. And you don't sing about the stuff that you might hear other rappers say, but you're trying to connect to people. So talk about your music for a little bit. Okay, so first and foremost, I want to say that my music is therapeutic for me. Mm. That's the difference between a lot of rappers and myself. Mm. I relate my struggles, my emotions, my hard times, my, you know, everything is me. It's all me. It's my story. So all of my songs, you're not going to hear about, I don't, I don't want to put out that type of energy in the world where I'm talking about popping drugs, um, drinking all the time. If I, if I mention it in my music, I will say how I used to do it. I'm over it. I elevated from that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just as being a recovering alcoholic and addict, you know what I mean? But basically my music is how I get through a lot of, a lot of my own stuff. Nice. You know? So, in turn, it's what I love because it it's how I translate. I'm, I've never been too good at communication. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I'm the guy. I can walk in the room, 
and I can come off as extroverted, right? Okay. But it's funny because my first project is called Extroverted Introvert. Okay. You know, because you adapt to your surroundings yeah. and kind of match energy levels. But I put the extroverted version of me into my music. Mm. So you're not going to, like I said, you're going to hear about, I have a song called Holding Me. And it's about, it's literally about my past struggles with addiction and alcoholism. Okay. It's about God. You're going to hear a lot about God in, in my um in my music. You're going to hear a lot about faith. Yeah. You're going to hear a lot about, you know, some things I used to do, but it's all me. Yeah. It's all me. Yeah. Um, And I kind of use my music as a spiritual outlet. Nice. So, you know, it's, like I said, it's therapeutic. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. you have any songs that you think people would, should spark to if they look you up right now? I would say on my first EP, which I released last year, okay. I have a song called Myself, which yep. is the first song on the EP. Yep. And I have a song called Holding Me. Those two songs, I feel like, are the ones that people people are going to connect to the most. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people in my in, in my own life yep. have expressed their, you know, their liking of those two. Nice. So that if, if they were to search me now, that's where I would say go to. Perfect. Okay. That's awesome. And yeah. viewers right now, I want you to look Mel up. And like I said, all of his information is going to be at the end credits of this video, but he's got something here. As much as he just explained to us that it's an outlet for him, I know that what he's been through other people have been through and you will connect to it because at the end of the day it's one of his passions and his passion is to help people just as much as it's great music and if his music can help people you're going to get something so much greater out of that so definitely look Mel. Thanks, it's awesome and one last piece mel i want to ask you well i want to ask where people can find you before they look at the credits where can they find you and to tell us about your website and what new stuff you got on the website right now okay so you can find me on, uh, give me one second. I got to yeah. find out what my Instagram handle is. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm ancient, man. So all this social media stuff, I really need help with sometimes. I get that. No problem there. <laughs> but um, my Instagram is, so my rap name is Rockwell, right? Yeah. So my Instagram handle is Rockwell underscore artist. Okay. Perfect. And that's where... That's where I post a lot of my, my snippets, the, the songs that are coming out. I'm actually working on my second project as we speak. Okay. Um, and I don't really do social media too much. So Instagram is the only place you're going to find like me posting about my music. I don't do Facebook or Twitter or anything like that. So okay. I'm really hoping that everybody just floods the Twitter. I mean, uh, Instagram, because I don't know how to tweet to save my life. I get um, that the same way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my blog, so my blog is called Spiritual Warrior. Um, that's where I put all the stuff that I write down in these notebooks, all the things that have clicked for me that have, that have got me to the level of spirituality that I'm at. I do little, um, I'm not even going to call them little, but I do like five to, I want to say five to nine paragraph essays pretty much on these different spiritual topics nice. from my point of view. And I like to, even in the post, you'll see that. I say, I just want to, I, I don't try to act like I know everything. Yeah. All I want to do is give you my experience mm -hmm. so that, so that you can translate that into your own spiritual understanding. Yeah. That's the whole, the whole purpose of it, you know? And um, so moving forward, what I did was I turned it into a, a shop. So coming up within the next month or so, I'm going to be, um selling a lot of metaphysical things it's going to be like a metaphysical supply store pretty much okay. you know i'm going to have crystals on there i'm going to have candles on there tibetan singing bowls a lot of the the tangible things that you can touch that can help people along in their spiritual journey mm -hmm. you know nice. um while still keeping the blog aspect of it for right now it's just the blog yep um i do things called um zen burnings and spiritual plaques where um i actually I'm gonna show one. So, so this is wood burning, right? So I do wood burning pieces okay. like this that I'm gonna start selling on the website. That's awesome. Basically, just places where, because I'm a firm believer that when you get into, you know, 
elevating your consciousness and being spiritual, you're going to need a space yep. for all of your spiritual things where you can come to meditate, a yep. beautiful space that, you know, just, just reminds you of the beauty of the world, the beauty, the, just the beauty period, you know? Yep. So I'm trying to offer on Spiritual Warrior things that will enhance spaces like that. Mm, okay. Things that will, and tools that will enhance people's spiritual journey. Yeah. So that's where I'm going with the website. Awesome. No, I love that. And then everyone watching, I want you to go check out his website because heck, just reading the excerpts, like there's power there. And I love what you said where it's your experience, just like the music, it's your experience. But if someone could get something from it, it's all that matters. You know, at the yes. end of the day, like I said before, we're all, it's meant, our lives are meant to evolve. Yes. To a higher self, to the purpose that God has for us and everything. But also it's a community aspect too, where my story is meant to help other people's stories Exactly. Went through what I went through so I could help the next person. And Mel did the same exact thing. So guys, if any of this video resonated to you, please go check out his website. Keep your eyes open for the shop. I think it's going to be huge right there. And definitely look at his Instagram for his music. Cause I've listened to some of the songs and I, I think they're awesome. I connect to them. I love them. And I know you guys will too, but all that being said, Mel, I thank you so much for being here, brother. I think this message had so much power behind it to the point where I know we got to get another one coming down the line. Because oh, yeah. There's so much more we could talk about. <laughs> well, we could talk for a week straight. We could record for a week straight and still not, and still not be done. <laughs> exactly, right? There's so yeah. much. So, guys, expect to see Mel a little bit more on here, too, because I love this message right now. It goes so deep and it's got so much power to help you to show you that there's more out there to show you that at the end of the day we're all here on a destiny and a purpose that leads to a higher self that leads to love that leads to heaven that leads to light and we're just trying to help one step at a time so mel love is the way that's what i'm saying exactly right exactly mel thank you for being here brother everyone like always i want you to like this video hit that thumbs up button below Hit the subscribe button. That number is going up every single week. I'm loving every second of it because it means more and more people are seeing the positivity and getting help from these messages. Please hit the subscribe button and share it to someone. If we said anything right now and someone sparked into your head, that is a clear cut sign to you that that person needs to hear this message just as much as you did. Please share it to them personally. And if you or anyone you know needs support or anything or needs a life coach to help you with exactly what Mel and I talked about, stepping into this spirituality, learning more to connect with your higher self. Go to billygifecoaching.com and set up a free consultation with me and I'll be right there for you. And heck, I can even connect with Mel who can help you just as much because I know we will. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I want to thank you, Billy, for having me, man. It's been it's been a pleasure. Yeah, dude. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy I had you as a guest man. Like I said, it's not the last time. I'm gonna have you on here a couple more times. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> Here we go. Have a good right. one, guys. All right. You know I've been around and doing it, but now it's my time to shine and start proving it. I'm losing it.